uh, or yeah. people that are in some sort of mental health crisis who have nothing to lose. Let's talk about this from the standpoint of the citizen. I mean, what can you tell people about how to know when they're being cased or if somebody's getting ready to harm them in some way? Mm -hmm. What are the tip-offs? Well, the first key is you got to have your head on a swivel. You know, you have to look up from your, from your cell phone. Um, but generally speaking, uh, you know, one of the ways you can, one of the indicators of someone that's up to no good is, you know, most sort of normal folks, most law-abiding people, if they're walking down the street, they do so with a sense of purpose, right? I mean, they're going from point A to point B. They're going to the store, to work, or to the coffee shop. Criminals who are just hanging out and looking for marks, they move in a completely different fashion. It's sort of this slow kind of, I don't have anywhere to be kind of stroll. They're constantly looking around. They're looking to the left, to the right. They're looking behind them. You know, they're looking for the police, they're looking for potential marks. It's, it's pretty noticeable. And then, uh, you know, it's as simple as if someone's crossing the street towards you when there's really no particular reason to do so. It's people who uh, will approach you and ask a couple of precursor questions to robberies, one of which frequently is, do you have the time? Criminals like to ask people, do you have the time? Because you for one, down. you look down, yeah. they might be able to see if you have an expensive watch that you're interested in. Um, you're a little off your guard. Um, and they can kind of, you know, if, if someone doesn't look at their watch, they think, oh, maybe this person is going to give me some trouble. Maybe this person is, is on to me. So then they might, they might move on to the next person. From a psychological standpoint, I always tell people that it's the element of surprise that they say, I don't know how I got mugged. And I say it's the element of surprise because if you're walking down the street, you don't think about coming up and robbing somebody. So that's not the first place your head goes, right? Right. You're walking down the street, somebody comes up and says, hey, what time is it? Your normal reaction is to be polite and say, well, it's, f and then you get hit in the head. Right. So they use that to get the jump on you, to get the element of surprise. We go to Kansas City a lot at Thanksgiving because they turn the lights on the Country Club Plaza there every Thanksgiving. And Robin and I were out late one night, and sure enough, like you say, there's a guy walking on the other side of the street, and it's dark. There's just the two of us out there. And he comes walking across diagonally, and he'd just been kind of bumping along over there. And then he comes across the street diagonally, and he looked pretty rough. Yeah. And he got about halfway across the street, walking right towards us, and... I just said, stop, walk away. And Robin like, what, what, what the hell's going on? The guy just stopped in his tracks and looked at me. And I said, are you deaf? Walk away. Mm -hmm. And the guy turned around and walked off. I guarantee you that guy was coming over there to rob us. Yeah. I got the element surprise and he walked away. I wouldn't rob me on a street. That's the second time I've tried to be mugged. You look like you could easily brook no nonsense. Well, I wouldn't pick me. Yeah, and you know, criminals are looking- I'd go look for Barney Five or something. <laughs> criminals are looking for easy targets. When they see someone that's a hard target, they think, I'm going to try someone else. Yeah. I was in Pittsburgh working on a trial. So I went jogging down by Three Rivers. You know, you go down, you run along the river walk. And I'm jogging down there. I got on a T-shirt and some biker shorts. Mm -hmm. And I'm running along the river. And this guy jumps out from under the bridge, says, give me your wallet. <laughs> I stop. And I've got no pockets. Where would it possibly be? I got no pockets. I just looked at him and said, are you an idiot? Look at me. Do I look like I've got pockets? I did a 360. I said, I got no pockets. And he just stood there and stared at me, and I said, look, you see that fountain down there? He looked down there and I said, I'm going to run down here around that fountain, and when I come back, your better be gone. I like that. Okay? So I just jogged on off. I looked over my shoulder, and he's standing there staring at me like, what just happened? Maybe that was his first robbery. Maybe. So I came running back. I was going to throw him in the river or something. 
but he was gone. So I've had two potential muggings, but nobody's ever gotten close enough to get their hands on me. I like to think that last guy maybe realized he wasn't very good at this and gave up his life yeah. of crime and is now yeah. doing something semi-productive. And he was about the size of my wife, and he didn't have a weapon. I just thought he figured, I'm a ask mugger. Can I have your wallet? I mean, he wasn't even menacing. <laughs> he was like, would, it, I... would it trouble you too much if yeah, I asked I have for the favor wallet. of your wallet? That's a good tip, though. They're not moving with purpose. Right. Because they want to take a while and let targets come by. Yeah, and you know... We are a polite society, but, you know, you and any sort of self-defense expert will tell you this. you got to listen to your gut. If your gut tells you this is wrong, then it probably is. You know, if some person who's being really friendly offers to help you inside your apartment building with your groceries and some kind of, you know, the hairs in the back of your net are going up, say no. It's okay.